Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to configure a switch IP address. So you can console into a switch or a router if you have physical access to the device. And check out the other tutorials on consoling if you haven't yet. But what if you don't have physical access? What if you're remote? In fact, what if you're halfway around the world but you need to access the switch? In order to do that, the switch needs an IP address. In fact, it's mandatory. It's, it's absolutely required that the switch have an IP address if you want to do something like Telnet into the switch or SSH. Also for other services like SNMP, you need to have an IP address on the switch. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to manually do this. We'll jump into the command line. And then after we configure our switch, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a few verification methods to make sure that our configurations actually work as intended. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we jump into the command line configurations, let's just take a look at an overview of what we're working with to give us some context. So we have a router and a switch, and they are connected. And the subnet we're going to be using is 10.10.10.0, and it's a slash 28. So that means our subnet mask is 255.255.255.240. If you don't yet know IP addressing and IP subnetting, please take some time to check out those tutorials. You need to know that stuff. So our switch is going to use dot one as an IP address and the router will use dot five. And keep those in mind because dot five is going to be our default gateway. So very similar to a PC when you configure its IP information and its default gateway, the switch has the same thing. But we'll jump into those details in just a second on the command line. Okay, we're at the switch command line, and the first thing we need to do is figure out where we want to put this IP address. So let's take a look at our available interfaces with the command show IP interface brief. And you can see I'm abbreviating that command. I'm going to quit so I don't see all of the output, but here you can see all of the physical interfaces, fast Ethernet 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. But you also see one in there called VLAN 1. VLAN 1 is the default VLAN configured on each switch. And there is a default virtual interface configured as well. And that's why we see it here, and it's named VLAN 1. So let's talk a little bit about a VLAN briefly. If you issue the command show VLAN brief, you can see all of the default VLANs. And VLAN 1 is called the default one. You can see the names of the others. Every port, and you can see them all listed on the right-hand side here, by default are associated with VLAN 1. So no matter which port we use to connect to the router, we know we're going to be in VLAN 1. And if we have a virtual interface for VLAN 1, and that has the IP address, then we, we can successfully connect and, can, and make our configuration work. Okay, so let's jump into it, and we'll begin, if we issue the command to look at the interfaces again, you can see that the status is administratively shut down. That is a default configuration. So when we jump into configuration mode, we want to enter that, that VLAN interface. So interface VLAN 1. And because the status is administratively down, so it's, it's disabled, it won't function, we need to enable it. The command to do that is no shutdown. So we enter that. And then we want to enter an IP address on there. So the command there is IP address, and if we question mark, we see the first parameter, which is the IP address. So we know we're going to use 10.10.10.1. And if we question mark again, we can see the second parameter is the IP subnet mask. We know that is 255.255.255.240 for slash 28, and we hit enter. And now we can exit out of there, and let's issue our interface command again. And now you can see the difference. VLAN 1 now has an IP address, and the status is up up because we enabled it. Now there's one more thing we need to do, and that is to configure a default gateway. Why do we need it? Well, when somebody tries to Telnet or SSH to the switch, the switch isn't going to know where to send the return traffic. So we set up a default gateway saying, send everything here. And that's just like you would on any PC on a local area network. Let's go back into configuration mode. And the command we want to use is called IP default gateway. Pretty intuitive. Now the IP address we want to list here 
is the IP address of the default gateway. And we know from our diagram that's the router, which is 10.10.10.5. We can issue that or get out of configuration mode. And we have successfully completed the manual configuration of the switch IP address. But we're not done yet. Let's go ahead and verify that this actually works. So we did one thing already. We checked out the interface command, the, the brief command. And I'll just show that again. Here we go. What else can we do? Well, we can actually issue the show run command, and we can check out the entire configuration. The points we are interested in actually come after all of the physical interfaces. And here you can see interface VLAN 1. We have our IP address configured. And just below that, you can see IP default gateway, and that's configured as well. You can also issue a few other commands. If you just want to check out the running configuration for the interface itself, you would issue show run interface VLAN 1. And that only brings up that specific portion of the configuration. Pretty convenient. And then let's actually go ahead and look at the interface itself, not the configuration. Show interface VLAN 1. And I'll scroll up so we can see the whole thing. Here we see VLAN 1 is up. The line protocol is up. We can see our IP address is configured, and they list it there for us in the slash notation. So that looks good. That's exactly what we wanted. The interface is up, and it has an IP address. So let's issue the ping command, and we talk about the details of ping in another tutorial, but this allows us to, to test connectivity, see if, if something is alive. So let's actually ping our own interface, see what happens. It works. We're pinging ourselves. That confirms proof positive that the interface is up and active. The other thing we want to do is ping our default gateway. So let's go ahead and put in the .5 IP address and see if that works. And there it goes. Pretty good. We know it works. We can try it again. Nice. So what we've done there is we've confirmed proof positive that the switch can actually reach the default gateway and that is how we verify that the switch IP address is up and functioning. So let's summarize everything we did. Steps one through four are the actual configuration command. So we, we entered interface VLAN one, and we gave it an IP address using the IP address command. We made sure that the interface was enabled by issuing the no shut command. And then we exited interface configuration mode, and we added a default gateway for the switch, and that is the IP default gateway command. Remember, the IP address we use in that command is the IP address of the default gateway itself. And then steps five through eight here are just a few verification commands, and it's really important to use these because if you've made a mistake, you want to catch it, you want to actually verify that this works. So you can issue the show run command and check out the entire configuration, or you can just check out the configuration of the interface for VLAN 1, which is the show run interface VLAN 1. You can also issue the show IP interface brief command to check out all of the interfaces, and there you'll see the status of interface VLAN 1 as well. And then finally, we can use the ping command, and we can use it not only to ping our own interface, but then we can use it to ping the default gateway. And by doing that, we have confirmed that the switch can successfully reach the default gateway. And that's it. That is how to configure a switch IP address. Thanks for watching.